Now, I don't know about you, but every time I see a terrorist attack, a shooting, or anything crazy like that, I think surely somebody could have stopped them. I mean, there is no way that there isn't technology out there that can prevent this sort of thing. Well, turns out there is, and these guys have just partnered with a $50 billion giant in the defense sector. Hi, this is Fabi with Equity Guru, and today I am looking at Patriot One Technologies. Now, when I looked at their technology, I thought, mm, yeah, right. I mean, does it really work? Uh, then I took a look at the market cap. I started to understand the company a little better, its development stage. Then I finally looked at who they're partnering with, and then I had to admit, okay, there is something to the story. Let's check it out. So you may remember this from a couple years back, but there have been instances where perpetrators or terrorists, whatever you want to call them, have been able to stage an attack before the security line at an airport. I believe this has happened before at LAX a few years ago, and I've heard of uh, something similar happening also in Belgium. So Patriot One is developing three different types of technologies and they can all work in tandem whereby the user would you know pay for the technology and most importantly a subscription to that technology and so you have here uh, the CMR which is where they could actually find if you have a gun so uh, they actually hold it and we're gonna get into this uh, quite soon they hold a technology that has been developed within a university that is able to detect for example um, guns and bombs and things like that with a high frequency electromagnetic technology there is also patscan sts which can detect airborne compounds so if somebody is carrying a, a compound a chemical that they shouldn't be patscan can actually detect that and there is um, PATSCAN VRS, which is, I guess, the most exciting technology right now because it uses video surveillance and machine learning in order to detect any sort of suspicious behavior. So as soon as, say, you pull into an airport and you get out of your car, there are already cameras there watching you. We all know this. I mean, if you've ever been to London, then I'm sorry, you've been videotaped all over the place wherever you were. And so the VRS technology is there in order to suspect anything that is out of place. Now, when you're talking about something like this, it's so specific. It's such a tiny market in the way that there is only a handful of defense companies around, but the ones that are around and gain commercial success, they are multi, multi-billion dollar companies. And the way that this works is you need to be an insider into this industry. I mean, if you and I came up with a technology, you know, that helped in any way to prevent terrorism and such things, then you'd better know somebody that currently works or has worked for, you know, the FBI, the CIA, uh, Homeland, uh, the TSA, or something like that. Otherwise, you're probably not even gonna get a meeting with these guys. So when I look at the Patriot One team, I see all the right agencies, all the right letters right here. We see uh, Department of Foreign Affairs, we see uh, international diplomacy with the British government, British police officer, you go over to their advisors and you see somebody who served as the first U.S. Secretary of Homeland Security. This is huge. And he's an advisor to the company. You also see uh, somebody who served as a chief constable of uh, Victoria and Vancouver Police Departments, etc., etc. So that's a huge check mark in my book. Now, it's important to recognize uh, what stage of development they're in. So um, part of their technology was first developed in uh, McMaster University. And this obviously had some implications in that you can get a lot of uh, government support and grants in order to develop these technologies. So that's always a plus. Um, then phase two, which happened you know, from that after seven years of, uh, of development, is you know to, to start running it in a few different ways. 
Now, obviously, um, it says here that they reached 93.7% true positive detection rate. This from a sales and marketing uh, point of view is huge. It is a lot better than not having it. However, in order to get it operational, you can't have more than 6% false detection or, you know, false positives in a normal environment. You can't, you know, get 6% um, wrong detection in, say, an airport where thousands upon thousands of people are navigating every single day. So that takes us into uh, the live environment research, and this is where they will take or they have taken all the information of real people going past these machines and uh, grabbing that information and further developing the product. Uh, then there is the, the paid pilot deployment that has already started. And where we're at right now is the relationships with the resellers in the different markets and the people that they're trying to sell to. Now, when I see resellers, to me, it's it tells me that this is a very difficult product to sell and it couldn't be any different because this is so specific. The people who are interested in this type of technology, uh, unfortunately, sometimes only actually pay for this after the worst has happened. So prevention is a tough sell, but if they can get into some airports, if they can get into some universities, or places that would be prone to the, these types of attacks, then it bodes well for them. Now, a very important partner that Patriot One has, and I always look for confirmation in a, an industry that I don't really know that well, is uh, are they able to partner up with the big guys? And they definitely have done that. So uh, Raytheon Canada has a non-dilutive cash financing of three million Canadian dollars with Patriot One, and this is super important because uh, Raytheon is a twenty-seven billion dollar company. So when it comes to security, they're really the name in town. So this is to help them further develop and deploy their technologies. And this is what we have to be looking for at this stage. It's all about sales. It's about closing sales. So at this stage of the game, Patriot One is into getting deals done in the sense that they need customers. They need their resellers to do a good job at selling the material uh, or even selling it directly. It's time to really get the ball rolling when it comes to hard sales and numbers coming in. So watch out for that in the next, I don't know, maybe six to 12 months, because this is going to tell you whether the clients think that the technology is any good. And so this came out just at the end of May, very recent. And uh, this is uh, approximately a $6 million deal that they have with Kramer. And Kramer as a reseller is very important because they were actually um, a supporter of Patriot One from way back when they were testing it. So because Kramer has been watching this closely um, and they can finally come to the point where they're willing to put money down and invest in this deal, that's huge. And I'm not talking about investing as in they're, they're bringing money into the company. No, they're, they're buying it, they're licensing it. So this is what you really want to see in the next number of months. It's sales, sales, sales. Uh, the development is is going to happen. It has happened. Um, I, I guess most of the development for this technology or for these technologies is behind us now. Obviously, the last few percentage points of improvement take a lot longer than, than the first part. But at the end of the day, if this is something that is worthy of millions of dollars of somebody's money, then we can assume that the technology is good enough. So watch out for the sales in the coming months. Now, Patriot One Technologies has just been upgraded to the Toronto Stock Exchange from the venture. Um, their stock price has been not the greatest uh, since March. They still hold a half or a quarter of a billion dollar market cap. And something I didn't really love seeing right here is uh, the sale of common shares by Dinesh Kandanchata. And I'm sorry, I'm probably butchering uh, this director's name. I, however, have not 
found his name on the roster here as management or advisor. Maybe he is a, a previous director of the company or just uh, something of that sort. So it was a bit worrisome when I first saw it, but because I don't see him uh, anywhere on the presentations, maybe um, that isn't such a huge worry. And another humongous partnership that they have is Cisco Systems. Yes, the Cisco that you have heard about many, many times. So this is a partnership whereby they can work together on network solutions, data solutions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, this is huge. When you know two companies like Cisco and Raytheon come on board, you already know that. If these guys can sell enough, if the technology actually sticks, then you have two very large, dare I say, possible acquirers. I mean, uh, this was would be really the best case scenario. And, um, you know, anything around $1 billion would probably be chump change for any of these two companies. So if you are hopeful or positive on where Patriot One is going, this bodes very well. After checking uh, some of their CEDAR documents, I could confirm that they have uh, around $60 million in the till. So any smaller corporation that's acting and, and developing interesting things in the space could possibly be bought out by them. And uh, it's not like they lack money in order to do advertising and marketing for their products and services. So not holding my breath for financing or anything like that. I believe that, you know, they have a decent run rate with the amount of money that they have right now. Very positive. I'll be watching Patriot One for some time for sure. And that's Patriot One Technologies, uh, PAT in the Toronto Stock Exchange and PTOTF on the OTC.